once again to release the kingdom message. So for those who have been watching, you know what we always ask, if you will, to like, share, and subscribe so that each time we come on, you'll be notified. And then we want to say we are so appreciative of our ministry gift, Dr. Larry, who always brings forth the word uh, in accuracy and with the power that Elohim has given him. So we just we just want to say that we are grateful for you, Dr. Larry, and shalom. All right. <clears throat> shalom, everyone. All right, we're going to continue on. You know, we uh, have been threatening to get back into what the eclipse actually mean, what's going on right now, uh, the meaning of this year that we are in right now, based on the scripture calendar that the Father gave uh, his nation in the earth, and that's the Hebrew calendar. And actually, we're in a new year now. It's, it's the, uh, uh, we're in the month of Nisan, a bill, or the first month of the year. It's not history, that's a secular, religious, Jewish, state governed year that's been instituted by uh, the secular government in israel and let me say this israel right now is not in israel okay israel is not in israel most of the nation of israel is has been scattered everywhere so the people you see in israel those are proselytes those are converts those are Ashkenazi, germanic polish European uh, people who converted to Judaism. Even with the uh, waters going on, I'm just gonna give you a little update that that's not what we're talking about. All of this, um, you know, we look at scripture and we've been teaching about the prophetic signs and what you need to look at and pay attention to. And as relates to, I always say this, I said, well, when Israel gets back to Israel, then you can start watching Israel. Don't I say that? All right, and the reason being is because uh, the true inhabitants of Cush, the land of Cush and Canaan, those were the sons of Ham. All right, the true inhabitants uh, being persecuted, the ones I've been, I've been to Israel, Jerusalem, all that stuff. They, they have been persecuted. Uh, they are being discriminated against just like uh, brown-skinned people are in America. It's no different. They're being oppressed. They've been pushed back. Uh, by the European so-called Jews that are there, okay? So the war that's going on and stuff like that, it's just people playing money games, that's all. They're playing money games. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm getting back into kingdom keys to successful living based on kingdom definition. And again, the word kingdom, the king's dominion, his territory, what he owns, and the citizens that dwell in that land. Earth is a colony that's occupied and inhabited by mankind who are a product of the Father's creation. He created man and put man on the earth, mankind, and told man to do what? Rule, manage, and govern what? The earth. Is that correct? And to reproduce other human beings in his image and in his likeness. Now in Barashi, a.k.a. Genesis chapter 5, you will find uh, this in the scriptures in the Holy Writings, whereas the word of Elohim tell us that Adam had children in his own image and in his own likeness, in Adam's own image and his own likeness. At that time, Adam was in a what? Rebellious state. He had and she had rebelled against the government of the kingdom, against the laws of the kingdom, against the word of the king, the will of the king, and their nature was connected now to the rebellious spirit who tricked them into doing it, ha Satan, Satan. Y'all catching it? So their intents were, was not to do good now. Uh, originally, if they had chose the will of the Father, that would have put them in a eternal state of holiness and purity that would have also connected them with the father throughout eternity in that state and every human being that came from them would have been born pure holy and righteous in their spirit you getting this all right so the everyone after that 
event that took place in terms of what they did and that came from the seed of Adam, that's all human beings, came from the seed of Adam, were born with a do wrong nature, with a sinful, rebellious intent on the inside. That's why we had to be what? Born what? Again. Now, FEM 4, 23 and 24 says that we have been created the part of us that has been, you can say, recreated is our what? Spirit. Our spirit has been created in what? True what? Righteousness and holiness according to the image of him who created us. You seeing this? Now, if we are not born again, our spirit is not righteous, nor is our spirit holy. Our spirit is in a state a broken fellowship as relates to right standing with the Father and unclean, unpure, and unholy. Now, as relates to success, success is living out of our born again spirit, which is what? Righteous and right relationship and right standing with the Father, pure and holy. If we do that, then our lifestyle will express only righteousness and what else? Holiness with no excuses. When we get born again, when we got born again, our spirit was regened. Titus talks about that. The washing and what? Regeneration of the who? Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? He is Elohim. He is the governor of heaven in the earth with the responsibility of conforming us to the image of the kingdom of heaven, the image and likeness of the Father, not in our spirit, because our spirit are, are already uh, put in the right place, but in the way we think, how we act, our attitudes, what we do, and how we express how we feel on the inside. That's our soul. You get in this? Just like a governor, responsibility is to make everybody pass laws that everybody conform to the nation that dispatched that governor in that colony that that nation had conquered. Now, the earth is who? Yahweh. The fullness thereof, them and the people that live in it. Is that correct? Now, whether a person get born again or not, by creative right, we are product of the Father creating us, which means that we still belong to him. That doesn't mean we'll spend eternity with him. That's based on choice. So when the Father made us in his likeness, he gave us a sovereign will to choose his will. Remember what they did in the beginning. They took their sovereign will and exercised it not to choose the will of the Father. That's what Satan, Satan, want us to do. He want us not to choose a father's will. And when we do that, we automatically obey his will. And what is Satan, universal? He only have one will and one law. And it's for the entire universe. And it applies to everyone who follows him. And that is do your will. When we do our will, we are automatically carrying out Satan's will and obeying his law. We need to understand it. So success is not, uh, wealth is not a product of success. Success, I mean, success is not a product of wealth. Wealth is a product of success. Are y'all getting this? As defined by kingdom law, by kingdom rules, by kingdom principles. So what we are doing, we are, showing you we are learning how to live out of our born again spirit and be holy the scripture said be what holy for i am holy never say that you can't be holy when we say if you're born again you can't be holy you're calling the father a lie you you're telling him he don't know what he is talking about we well, you know everybody, you know, God understand and he don't expect everybody to do this and do that. That's a bunch of trash plantation, religious plantation trash talk is what that is. That's what that is. 
And we all are product of our sources of thought. So we're going to show you an image of this brain again. I'm using this not only to uh, show evidence of how the brain functions, but this also applies to how we function as a divine being in the earth. A spirit being with a soul living in a body inhabiting the earth. Okay? So, you, of course, you see this picture of the brain. And the larger part of this brain is for thinking. Not singing, not dancing, not playing football, basketball. Not walking in the park, but for what? Thinking. They'll get the image up in a minute. I want that picture of the brain. You got the brain most of the capacity and ability that's in the brain has been designed for us to think and learn. The brain is physical, is it not? All right, so how can physical matter think and learn? That's why I just want to show you this physical image. Also, if you let me put it like this so I can show you a picture of your spiritual brain. And what our spirit has been designed to do and what our soul has been designed to do. Okay. Now the small two small parts are for what the limbic is what emotions, right? And then you get that brown part is the what survival mode. So if we are very emotional and are led directed by emotions, we're not thinking and we're not learning because we have shut down the part of our brain that's designed to receive signals from the spirit so it can orchestrate what goes on in the body. If I'm in survival mode, I'm not thinking, I'm not learning. Why? Because all the signals for learning that will cause us to think and meditate have been shut down, and the only signals that our body is receiving, the only impulses that the mind can connect with, the only desire that the will will be filled with is to do what? Survive. No, I don't want any confrontations. I, just give me a paycheck every week. Just let me go to church on Sunday and Wednesday and feel like I'm going to heaven or let me get saved so I can go to heaven. That's it. Let me take care of my family. That's it. Let's just do what everybody else do. That's it. Let's just follow the crowd and not the cloud. That's it. I can't do that. You don't know my history. You don't know what I've been through. That's it. Because something has happened in the realm of the spirit to traumatize the person thinking and to distort the mind. So now the signals that's coming to the brain from the mind and the source of thought that I have is telling my body and releasing chemicals in me to react like that. You'll be shocked if I was to tell you, you give me seven days and you'll be doing 40 push-ups and 40 sit-ups and running two miles in under 18 minutes easy. You'll be shocked because some of y'all never do them now. You never did too. You talking about 40? But if you put yourself in an atmosphere where those um, impulses or directions or dictates or messages, voices you are hearing, that's all that you hear, then you would take your body out of that survival mode not to do anything so it could survive to a learning mode and a being able to be taught mode and respond to what you are, you are hearing. I did it. I was a, a drill instructor in the military. It didn't take us no month to get them guys to pass that PT test. You know what they heard? This is what you can do, and this is what you are going to do. And you don't have no choice but to do what we tell you to do, period. No compromise. No exclamation, ex explanation, no alternative method. That's all you heard. And every last one of them, if they didn't pass a TPT test, then we kicked them out. 
and told them they wasn't fit to be in this man's army. That's, what we, that's how we were taught to train people. So I thought about that. I said, now that's the physical, and it's just dealing direct with the physical, but you first have to get in a person's head. You seeing it? You get in the head, in the mind, be that source of thought. That person received that thought. It, it breaks that boundary of being in survival mode. And those signals are sent by the brain to the body to do something that you can do. And I'm going to supply the energy for you to do it. And, you know, some guys, you know, they didn't make it three weeks. They had to be refitted for the uniforms because they came in one size and three week, week, weeks later, they were five sizes smaller because that brain took all that stored energy called fat and burned it. That's why it's there, it's stored energy. But if I'm, I'm in survival mode, I just continue to do what? Store energy because I don't want to face the challenge. Now, many people have stored knowledge in them that they refuse to engage in. You see, see where I'm going with this? You have received the truth. You know what to do. But versus doing it, you continue to store it and store it. Tell everybody else what to do. Anybody ever talk to somebody like that? Know something about everything and how to do it? But I'm looking like, um, <clears throat> you know all of this about how to be successful in these areas, but you Uber it. I don't, I don't understand it. Now, I, if I got four cars, 10 trucks, eight vans in my garage, and you telling me how to get vehicles and you Ubering, again, I got a problem with it. I would say, why don't you use that stored knowledge for your, you would say, why don't you use the knowledge for your, that's the person in survival mode, in survival mode. And I'm gonna tell you something, I know in this congregation that you are being fed proper nutrition. You are being well taken care of. And I also know that many of you have a lot of fat spiritually in knowledge that you're not applying to your life. So what we're doing with this particular teaching is getting you out of that survival mode into the mode of execution. Somebody say execution. So we ain't taking no excuses. All right, so I want to show you that image so that we can, we can get this thing and see how important it is. Whatever trauma you have been through in the past, the answer is here to eliminate it in the present. Whatever you have been suppressing all of these years, it's time to unsuppress it and bring it out, deal with it and replace it and be the real you which is your born again spirit using your mind, will, and emotion, carrying out the will of the Father in your body and walking in purpose and the divine will of the Father in the earth, which you can never ever exceed in that joy. How about waking up every morning? Can't, how about watching the clock all night? Because you can't wait till the daylight hit. Because you have so much that's on your plate that the Father has given you that you want to go get it done and you know how to do it. Man, I know how to do it. I'm just so, I don't have time to sleep. I mean, you know you need to sleep. We're going to, co we're going to cover that. But you're not waking up to go drink some coffee or listen to some music or go to the mall. You're waking up to hit, when your feet hit the ground, hell is in trouble. And you know hell is in trouble. And hell knows hell is in trouble. The devil knows he is in trouble. He wants you to sleep all day and all night because if you are awake and active, he got some issues. He got a challenge on his hand. That's success. All right, so let's look at this. We uh, went over how to shift gears and, and stay in cruise mode. That's what we're dealing with now. Point number one, we must control our soul and body through the spirit. That's what we just got through dealing with. Point number one was what? We must control our soul, mind, will, and emotion and our body through our what? Through our what? So the scriptures say live out of the born again spirit and we won't 
be subjected to the mind, will, and emotion dictates of the flesh, right? Right. We're not going back over that. Point number two, we have our own counselor on the inside, the real you. Many times we say the Holy Spirit spoke to us and actually it was your born again spirit you finally heard. Well, I, I heard a still small voice. They're like Eli who did. He heard a still small voice. Well, actually, if the father had spoke to him, <clears throat> remember the language of fire is the language of the father. If he had spoke to him <clears throat> with any volume, Elihu would have tore a hole in that mountain and ran out the other side. He was already in a state of panic, running from Isabel, called Jezebel. He was already there, and the father knew that he needed to speak to Elihu to calm his nerves. And many have taught that that's the only voice uh, that the father expressed is the still small voice. The Holy Spirit voice is very authoritative, by the way. We, when he speak, you know who he spoke. <laughs> our born again spirit is the conscience of our spirit. The conscience of our spirit is the voice of our born again spirit. And our born again spirit is speaking to us all the time. We just, we don't, don't hear it. Or we are insensitive to, it's some being insensitive to your own self, isn't it? And most people are insensitive to their own self. Now, we're not insensitive to the conscience of our soul. Because we're hearing that all the time. Or what's coming in through these ears, through these ears, and what we're seeing with the eyes, and what's processed through the soul, but never get uh, to be filtered through the spirit, so the spirit can tell me whether this knowledge is acceptable or not. That, that doesn't happen. Many haven't been taught that, and many that are being taught that is throwing it up, and it's called spiritual fat. Because I still haven't made a decision to conquer. Once you make that decision to conquer in your mind, which is spiritual substance, then your brain will receive that message and it'll reset itself and take itself out of survival mode. Then proper chemicals will be released in the body and the function of the body will be set in order and all the food that we intake and the air that we breathe will be processed to feed the, fill the body so the body can carry out the functions of the spirit, which is the will of the Father. And it's not the will of the Father primarily to take our body and run up down a basketball court sweating. Get it? Point number three, the real you have a counselor on the inside, the Holy Spirit. So we had the voice of our born-again human spirit. <clears throat> you had the voice of who? The Holy Spirit. You see, how, you see how, how solemn it is in here now? You see that? Because there's no entertainment now. The soul, the flesh, always want to be entertained and inspired. And I, I don't want to inspire you. I want to Im impact you to making a decision to be better and to be successful. Now, let's go into our next uh, uh, gear we are shifting to shift out of the survival mode and shift into the what? The cruise mode. And you don't have to do a lot when you put it in cruise mode. That, that helps you focus on what you need to focus on and put your energy where it needs to go, put your thoughts where they need to be, receive from the source of thought that we need to be receiving from. So tell your body, you better wake up. Because we're not, we're not laying around sleepy in the survival mode. See, the body, the brain already in survival mode, those messages coming in because of the mindset and the mindset, you better sleep instead of receive something that's going to motivate you and make you go out and do something about the situation that you currently have in your life. That's why people get sleepy when the word is being taught, because there are layers of fat, spiritual tissue that's continue to be built up on that's not being used. But when you begin to use what you hear, you still sitting there saying, I want more. Mm. All right, meditation. Somebody say meditation. How many of you all heard of transcendental meditation? Transcendental meditation. You know, people are taught that at a young age. I heard a lady saying her parents took her and had her coach in how to get involved into transcendental meditation. I'm saying it right? Transcendental meditation, yes. 
and that is channeling, what you call channeling. And what it is, even though the, the spirit is cut off from the life of the father, that doesn't mean the spirit cannot function in the spirit realm like it was designed to function. Our spirit have no limitation. There are no time or space or distant restrictions in our born again, I mean, in our spirit, whether it's born again or not. Why? Because our spirit is what? Spirit. So they know how to be here and communicate with spirits in another continent. They know Paula White, <clears throat> when she was trying to help Donald Trump, but she messed up and broke a covenant. She was, she was when she was talking about uh, uh, chanting and calling in spirits from Africa and they didn't show up. Y'all remember that? They didn't show up, did they? She was channeling. Her spirit was in Africa communicating with those demons in Africa then. She forgot she is not their boss. So she was trying to use religion to boss those spirits and she were not over them so they could not respond to her. She was transcendental meditation. That's what she was doing at, as she was speaking. She had did it before she came out and then she went to apply what she had already been involved in. Let me tell you something. Everything that we do, if you wake up and get out of the survival mode, everything you do will already be pre-planned during your meditation. People have found out about this and they are using it for negative. They're using it to teach people to communicate with demons and other beings and things like this. That is nothing new. The Father, the, all of that is in the Word right now. And you hear people saying, plan your day. Do this, do that. Do, they've been listening to some old uh, medium spirit. They'll tell you to do all this stuff, but they don't give you no word. And it's not coming from Holy Spirit. They never glorify the Father. They never glorify Yeshua. They never glorify the Holy Spirit. They never acknowledge one creator. And even in, in the book of Barashi called Genesis, you know, when the Father said, let us make man to us, he was referring to, was who came from him, which is his son and his spirit. You had other malachims called and translated from the Greek to angels. You had other divine spiritual beings that were watching all of this take place. However, when it came to making man in his image and his likeness, he did that himself through his son with the power of his own spirit. He didn't allow any of the existing malachim, spirit beings in heaven, to participate in the creation of man. There are those who teach that another race of being created us. And Elohim created that race of being and they created us. No, 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 that's wrong. Very smart gentleman, very intellectual. Do some study. This dude put thousands of dollars, his own money, in research and checking things out. But the reason. I saw exactly why he is off. He is off because of the Bible and people who believe the lies that's written in the Bible. Remember, I told you where the Bible come from. It's not the Holy Scriptures that he is mad at. You got Holy Scriptures in the Bible that most of it has been manipulated, and you know this. He is mad at that. And out of his anger, Satan has connected in him and given him this knowledge of all these other beings and artifacts that they are finding and things that the Roman uh, Catholic Church covered up when they formed the Bible. They kicked out those books that will tell us about the pyramids in the Antarctic that they are finding now. Pyramids all over the world with the same exact pattern with no marks of chisels or hammers, precise cut, and you know it had to be a laser. They, you know, they got rid of those books and want you to believe that everything started 6,000 years ago. Are y'all catching me now? But you got to get this concept out of your mind that the Bible was before Yeshua. It was not. They took the who? Tanakh. Is that correct? And there are some mistranslations in the Tanakh. They took the Tanakh, changed the name to what? Old Testament. Who did that? Bishop Melito, a Catholic bishop at the Church of Sardis. 
the same bishop changed the messianic writings of Elohim, of Yeshua, the Messiah, to what? The New Testament. It wasn't the Hebrew sages. The emissaries didn't do that. The Holy Spirit didn't do that. A Catholic bishop did that. So those who take the Bible as an infallible word of Elohim believe that. Not believe in the Holy Spirit. You believe in man. And this young, one young brother went on to say, brown-skinned people are the most deceived people walking the face of this earth and can't understand why you go through brutalization, manipulation, defamation, and every evil punishment can ever be afflicted on the people and you still running around sniffing behind the butt of your suppressors and their theology and religion. You had the word first. You know the Bible first. And that's what slavery has done to brown-skinned people in America. People outside of here, they think different. Am I right? Like Ugino Beach. <laughs> and somebody asked me what I thought about him. I said, he just literal. He just, they could have put at the age of 12, kill your son and put it in the Bible. He would have been teaching, kill your son when he get 12. He have no revelation. He have no illumination. Okay? All right. Now, so meditation. Somebody said meditation. So I want to qualify and, and what the kingdom type meditation and show you that people meditate and they go into other places and communicate with spirits all the time. Most of these so-called prophets around here, all they're doing is communicating with demons, with fallen malachums. D listen, can I qualify a prophet real quick based on uh, the true writings of the Father? Prophets are repeaters of the law. Prophets were never put in the earth to tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. The prophets that prophesied in Scripture, the language of fire, the language of the Father came, his word came on them, and they began to say what the Father had already did. Remember, he finished everything before he started it. They repeated what was already planned for mankind. And they said, if you do this, this won't happen. If you go over here, this will happen. All of it was for the direction of people who didn't have the capacity to have Holy Spirit in them. The anointing came on three categories of people, the kings, the priests, as well as the prophets. You remember when Sheol was anointed king, the spirit of prophecy came on him, and he began to do what? Prophesy or speak the language of the Father with his intent and his will and his desire in it. When the priest was consecrated and the priest read the word, the priest was speaking from illumination of the father coming up on them speaking to the people that's why when the priest spoke and read the word the scripture the holy right writing power was released and the people knew that same way with the prophets the prophets were a type of the spoken word you don't need a prophet to tell you what's going to happen tomorrow why why get quiet because i raised my voice I'm not trying. I'm just working with what we got. How many have heard of discernment? We're we trying to get in this meditation on. What is discernment? Discernment is the ability to divide good from evil. The ability in the realm of the spirit to see holy and unholy. The ability to know what's coming. Y'all getting this? When we got born again, all of us have the capacity to know the will of the Father. The Father isn't confined to time. What's going to happen in the future is put in the category of time. Our spirits are what? Eternal. Our spirits are already before time, and our spirits were before the past. 
was, is not the father before time? Isn't he before the past? Have we been creating true righteousness and holiness in our born again spirit? It's so simple, is it not? So discernment resides in all of our spirit and we know what's going to happen in the future because the future is present within our spirit right now. Y'all listen? A person can have discernment and will immediately say they're a prophet. That, that needs to be corrected. And a prophet who is getting you depend on them is a lying prophet and prophesying based on imaginations of their own heart, which is to get your money and control your life. Prophets don't like me good. Music folk don't like me good. Religious folk don't like me good. I'm very happy to know that. Anything that's born of a lie should hate and don't like the truth. Y'all getting this? I'm not the truth. The spirit of truth is in me and we speak the word of truth. You're not the truth. The spirit of truth is where? In you. Come on, talk to me now. And when you speak out of your spirit, you're speaking the word of what? I'm see, this is now I'm discerning the heaviness of deception. It's 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 real heavy, and I can see clearly how mankind have been cut off from our potential. Just like we're talking about new technology. What percentage of the brain is used right now? Just the physical brain that's receiving messages uh, from our spirit and, and our mind as the spirit and light of man. What percentage do they say that we use, most people use in terms of their brain power? Say it again. Say it one more time. I can't hear you now. You need to say it one more time. Did you say 10%? So all that big thinking brain up there. But where's the 90%? Can I take a drink? If we're using 10, that means the whole human race as a whole is in survival mode. And one person starts exercising or what they do, they come out of that survival mode and go into the thinking mode, and we say they are brilliant. Ooh, they're scholar, their IQ is, your IQ, their IQ is no higher than your IQ. They just use the thinking part of their brain more than you do. They have gotten out of the survival mode, now the brain can receive from eternity. The brain can receive the dimension of heaven, the sources of thought that come from the realm of heaven, come from the Holy Spirit. The brain can receive that, and it is okay. No, this what what's eight at nine plus twenty four? I saw a young boy doing this. He's not from America. He's from Africa. He haven't been colonized in his mind yet. What's eight and nine plus two plus eight plus forty eight divided by six minus twenty one plus thirty eight plus forty? So and so, so and so, so and so. How did you do that? I just it's just numbers. That's all. What you the Dumbo? All right, meditation. Look at Yahashua 1 and 8. Meditation. Somebody say meditation. You can't meditate if something in your ear all the time. If the TV is on all the time. Where's my phone? Give me my phone. You, you're not, you can't be awake five minutes without putting this in your hand. Test yourself. Now test yourself. Write it down. See how long you can be up without putting this in your hand. And you're not checking your cameras. No, you're not checking the cameras. No, you're not. You're on social media. You're not studying. Now, if you're studying and looking up some words in the Hebrew and going over your notes, I, I got that. This could contain all of that. But if you're doing anything else other than getting into something that's going to energize, that's going to motivate, that's going to add to your vision and where you are going, then you do that, but if it's not, you can't attribute it to that, why you got it in your hand? Survival mode. I need to see what somebody else think. I need to get their thoughts. I need to see what someone else is doing. So start writing down the amount of time you got this in your hand and you're not doing business. 
you're not studying. It, it has nothing to do with, it's all entertainment, in other words. You, you catching it? And then start working on getting out of the survival mode and using that whole entire brain. If we start doing that, DJ, then you're a multi-billionaire tomorrow. Because your spirit will be able to send wisdom and knowledge to your brain that's already in your spirit. Listen, the Holy Spirit is in our spirit. Don't you think he know all the gold is hidden on this earth? In this earth? Don't you think he know that? He, he know about things that's already been used. It's not nothing new. He know about technology that pre-existed that Satan came in and took and got a hold to so he can use it to get credit to himself to give it to those that are, that are worship him. You know, I give you all this if you worship me. I, I teach you how to do this. This I, I give you this invention. I show you how to reduce a, a, a chip this small and to do more than a machine big as, as big as this building. You know, America got this thing, the bigger the better, right? And that's the church is like that, the bigger the better, right? Uh, DJ, oh, DJ, he a hacker, professional. Um, <laughs> I use the term. IT, this guy got it. He know IT, I'm telling you. <laughs> and that's why I be using that color. Do you need a big chip? Which is the most powerful chip, the big one or the small one? What is micro? That means small don't. All right, so why is it that they have figured out that you can condense more information on a small chip than you, you need for a big one? I mean, you listen, isn't a microchip in here? So why is this thing capable of, you see this laptop, why this small thing can do the same thing this can? Can somebody tell me that? Because that's ignorance. Big is better is ignorance. And they already figured out how to reduce matter to smaller things. It's space. You empty the space out. Y'all catching this? That, that stuff, well, I want to go to church with at least a thousand people so I can hide in the crowd. So, you know, all I want to do is go to heaven. Because that same demonic controlling thought is in you and has been put there by religion. You actually think these people want you to wake up and understand the word for yourself and be led by the Holy Spirit on a daily basis? You would need them to prophesy to you then. You wouldn't have to pay all that money to go to their conference then. You wouldn't have to be put in a position of buying their planes anymore. You won't pay their mortgage note anymore. All right, Matt, Yahashua 1 and 8, what does the word, what does the holy writing of the Father say? The scripture said, do what? This what? It, it, it's not Bible. This what? You know what book he was talking about? He was talking about those books in the Tanakh. Are you listening now? He was not talking about the book of Yahashua. The book of Yahashua wasn't written yet. What book was he? And he wasn't talking about the Torah. How many heard that there's five books in the Torah? Who taught you that? The Roman Catholic Church taught you that. There are seven books in the Torah. Not five. The Roman Catholic Church took two of them and condensed it and said, this didn't follow the word of God. And we believed it. Did we not? This book, the Yahashua was not written yet. The accounts of Yahashua and Moshe and him taking the people into the promised land, the land of Canaan and Cush, it had not been written. The book of Ayab is older than all the books in the Bible. What's called Job. That book was written before Moshe was ever born. There are other books that were already written. So he said this book which contained the teaching and the instructions from the Father given to you as a nation to represent me in the earth is not to do what? Depart from what? Your speaking. 
You only speak what you think. We only think what we hear. We only hear based on the source of thought that's feeding us. So he is saying, if you let my words, my instruction, my teaching feed you, do that. Are y'all listening? This book, these teachings, and for all the law legal folk, he is not talking about the Torah. He's talking about his word that's written in the books that they, the writers, wrote so that the people wouldn't forget. Remember, the father never communicated to Adam in writings. He never put a book in Adam's hand, Adam's hand. He never put a book in Masa Eza Negad's hand. They never put a book in their children's hand. They did not have a book, a document. He spoke to them his living word, and they heard that word, obeyed that word for who knows how many years until they disobeyed that word. And even after that, he continued to speak to them through his what? Language of fire through his word. And many wrote the word that they heard and put it in books. All right. So he said this book of the what? That is not talking about the Torah. You have several words in the Hebrew referring to law that has been mistranslated into the English word law. As a matter of fact, all y'all Greek folk, when the Greek, Greeks got a hold to the Hebrew writings and changed the language into Greek, they used one Greek word for law, nomos, at the time that they did the translations and manipulated the word to fit their own agenda. They only used one word, and the word nomos in Greek just means law. It doesn't tell you whether it's civil law, whether it's ceremonial law, whether it's eternal law, whether it's kingdom law. It doesn't tell you any of that. It just simply means law. They did that on purpose. So people would not be able to distinguish the ritual and ceremonial from the kingdom law. So when you hear the word law, they'll say, that's passed. That's under the law. Well, what law, Cletus? Can you tell me what law? Uh, uh, the law of Moses, the, the, the Tanakh. Oh, okay. I mean, not Tanakh, but they say the, the Old Testament, the Torah, the law of Moses. That, oh, so that's the only law that was on the earth. That, I'd be how to do that. You mean to tell me that all creation is built on law, all creation have law in it by inherent created right? You mean to tell me that all the commands that the Father gave before anything was written? You mean to tell me none of that existed? Wow. Wow. So Adam wasn't given no commandments. He, he could not have been commanded to do anything because a command come from law. When the father say do something, that's law. Oh, okay. Now I understand, Cletus, why you so ignorant. Because there's an ignorant spirit that's in the religious system. That's teaching people this trash. It shall not depart from your language the way you speak, but you are to do what? You are to think about what I said. Nothing new under the sun. The Father has already said what he is going to say. That's why you hear the prophet saying, thus says the Lord, so-and-so this and so-and, I'm going to show you this, and I'm going to bring you before the nations. Okay, Mr. Prophet, can you show me, prove to me that that has already been preordained by the Father? Can you prove to me that he said that before he created the universe? And if you can't prove that to me, then shut your mouth. Period. And the proving we're looking for are in the what? Precepts. What is the idea of the Father? Did he have me in mind? What did he have in mind for me when he created me? Before he created me, did he want me to go to the nations and stand before the nations? And thus said the Lord. You mean to tell me he's going to condense himself, his will, his knowledge into one person to go to nations? Oh, for real? Wow, Cletus. Wow. 
Oh, so the Holy Spirit is in you and you alone. Wow, Cletus. Wow. Oh, we got to go to your conference to learn something. The Holy Spirit in me don't know enough to teach me for himself. So we got to go where you at, Cletus. Wow. Come on, y'all say it with me. Wow, Cletus. Wow. We have been wowed into a stoop of ignorance by this religious spirit. I, I, I see why Yeshua hated religion. Yes, he did. He, listen, he'll talk to the sinner, be nice to him and heal him and everything. Feed him, because the sinner know that they were a sinner they needed help. When we come to the religious folk, dead man, bones, your whitewashed wall, you don't want to enter the kingdom, preventing my people from entering the kingdom. It's your ugly self. Look at you. He didn't like them scribes, Pharisees, or Sadducees. Did he not? That was religion. Can I tell somebody a secret that don't know this? Yeshua never came this earth to start religion. Can I tell you something else going to make your socks drop down on the inside of your ankle? Christianity is a religion that was invented by the Roman government. The word Christ and Christianity was here before Yeshua ever came on this earth, approximately over 300 years before that. But they didn't tell you that in Sunday school, did they? Why you think they didn't tell you that? Why didn't they put that in the Bible? Well, it's there, but they manipulated the translations to keep you from seeing that. I mean, well, it's in the Bible. I, they became Christians at Antioch. It's in the Bible. I believe the Bible. So the enemy was successful in putting lies when he took the scriptures, the holy writers, and incorporated lies with it. So everybody accepted that as truth, and truth cannot be truth is a contaminated. That's why we have to dig out the truth. I, I know there's some tall cotton I'm chopping. It's got some bad grass on these roads. So he said to do what? Think about what I've already said. My thoughts are thoughts of peace. Shalom. You remember who the prophet said? To do what? Give you a future and a hope. I have no thoughts of evil concerning you. That's what the father said. That was his intent. And then the prophet Jeremiah who repeated that. And what is it? Jeremiah who? Um, who? 29 and 11. You will see that there where the father said, I didn't, I, I never planned no calamity for your life. I, I never, that's not my plan. I, I, I never wanted you to go through that. That never was my thought. I didn't tell you to get involved in anything that turned out bad. I can't, listen, I can't tell you to get involved in something that turned out bad. If, I, if that was to happen, I couldn't be who I am. Why? Because I finished your life before you were even born. And if you listen to what I have already done, and what I've already completed, if you hear me, then you'll know who you are and what to do. And you will find out that my thoughts are thoughts of peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken, everything whole. You seeing it? To give you a future and a hope, an expected end. When we have expectation of the end, then we know what our end is. Wake up, Israel. We know what our end is. I see this, I see this sleep down. I see that old fiber goes west high. I see that eye. Y'all, y'all remember that? Y'all, y'all know what's I, I like fiber go west. You ought to watch sometimes instead of all this crazy stuff out here. Let your kids watch that. Fiber goes west. These are the lazy eye. He ever that like the lazy eye. I see that lay. I, I see it. I see it. I see a couple of y'all over this side too got that lazy eye. That fiber. Don't be trying to. You can't put that, that stuff on me. It ain't working. I'm saying wide awoke. All right. He said, meditate in, in the instructions, the teaching that are revealed to you who have already planned for you and who you are. You meditate in that so you can do what? You observe it. Observe me to pay attention to, to do what? To do all. Somebody say all. Oh, well, you know, I haven't given that up in my life, child. You know, I love the Lord, but I ain't gave that up. Oh, you, you're not going to be successful. Just forget it. Just forget it. You can't take the Father in pieces. It's all or nothing. You do all that is what? You do all that is what? That is all what? 
when Yeshua was dealing with Satan, what did he say to him? He operated as a legal agent, as a human being, as a man in the earth, and the man said or repeated what was written. What was written was what the father had already said. Not history. He didn't repeat history. He repeated what the father had already and what he had already what? Because he said that man can is not to live by stake and ribs and entertainment and natural secular knowledge alone, but by what? Every, every, every that proceeded from the father, not the prophet, not the teacher, not the pastor, from the who? Father. And if you got a pastor not telling you what the father have already said, you got a fake Jake pastor. Making you feel good in your mess. Well, you know, the Lord is, I don't talk about sin because people know, oh, Joel Osteen, you they know what they're doing, so we don't need to talk about that. Here's Satan minister standing right in front of you, 980,000 people sitting there listening to the junk, and you sending money to him that you don't have because he won't tell you about your mess that you may observe to do all that is written because of what? Come on. For when? For when? When is then? Then, then is when you we hear what he have already said continually. And when we begin to do what he have already said continually, then we will be what? We'll have what? Wait a minute. We'll have what? No, no, no. no. You will do what? Now the Lord will bless you. Uh-uh, no, no. The church told us the Lord will bless me. Oh, Ty, I got a blessing from the Lord. The Lord will, bless. will do this and the Lord will bless you. This is written in proper context. And then who will make your way? Who will? Who will? Crypto Dollar will. You sure? Who will? T.D. Jake will. Huh? Juanita Bynum will. Paula White will. George Myers will make your way prosper. Who will make your way? So why, based on kingdom definition of turn, if anybody that's hearing me now is not successful, who fault is it? No, 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 no. Well, let me ask the brown skin, aka black people. Let me ask y'all. If you you are not successful, who fault is it? No, y'all told me it's a white man's fault. Y yes, you did. Y yes, you did. You said the white folk this and the white folk that. And and then you run right out here to the white man church, give your money. Being stupid, think you really doing something, or you run to the black man church who the white man started. Black or white, the white man started the church when you get through with it. Ain't, aren't not Italians white? Are not Greeks white? Y'all help me, because if I'm wrong, I need to be put in check. Are they olive skin? They white. Oh, 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 they, they're Hispanic, they're white. Mexicans are white people who speak Italian language. If you're not brown, you white, period. Oh, wow. So it's your fault because you keep running to the oppressor to get his blessing. And other people from the islands coming in, doing more business, and you the one built the country getting your money, I said getting your money, an immigrant whose family was responsible for blowing people up in other nations can come to this country, legal or illegal, start a business, get free health care, get free food with your money. But you still setting up, hallelujah, well, praise the Lord, we're all in Christ, so we free because we're in Christ. Well, you're a Christian, we're in Christ. We okay, it's just 
It's not about that hate and stuff. Okay, well, how come they still making more money than you do in the church? Shouldn't Christians make the same amount of money? Have you noticed they don't? Oh, we get quiet when we start hitting stuff like that. He said, you will make your way prosper. He don't want no government to make you prosper. He don't want no race of people to make you prosper. If you are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, you are one race in a way called from one blood. So everybody who's born again, citizen of the kingdom of heaven, no man, whether you white, black, blue, brown, blue, black, uh, blue, light, black, dark, black, light, white, right, red, green, yellow, the father wants you to make your own way prosperous and not depend even on the system that your ancestors put in and instituted to cause you to have a, what, better rights and more access to be better and do more at the cost of other people's blood that they back shed. If you are white, that is not there to make you prosperous. You reject that. I don't want no favor. My brother just walked in. You didn't give him a loan because of his skin color. I'm not taking your loan or dealing with your bank. The father, the word said, he'll, I'll make my way prosperous. You'll make your way prosperous and what? I got to finish this. And what? Then, two days, right? And then you will do what? Have what? Have what? Good success. Have I not what? Commanded you. It's a law. It's a law for us to hear the Father's word, of, uh, to do his word, meditate it, hear it, meditate it, do it, and be successful. It's the Father's will for all the citizens of the kingdom of heaven to be what? Successful. And that success not be based on no system. What, what you call these? Entitlements. So I don't, I don't teach that mess. And I got multi-races a part of this congregation. I don't change nothing I'm teaching. I'm teaching the truth. I'm telling them, everybody, the same thing. You depend on the word to make you prosperous. You depend on that word to make you prosperous. And then when that word make you prosper, see, don't nobody have control of that now because you did it. You didn't sign no covenants. Everybody, these singers want to have a CD and they want to sign up with a label. That label owned you. That, that CD, whoever owned that stuff, owned you. When you sign up for that uh, basketball and all those millions of dollars, they own you. You didn't wait to make your way successful and profit. They paid you that money to entertain people and keep them in the, what? The, the survival mode. The instrument of Satan being used to keep people in the survival mode. That's all it. I'm so glad my son made that decision. But he was doing his best to say, Dad, Mom, I appreciate what you invested in me. I'm going to make this thing work. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Caleb. Your skill is above anybody on this floor. Things happen. He got discouraged. Put him in survival mode. He wouldn't even play based on the gifts and the talents he had. Wouldn't even do it. Coaches saw it. Why won't he play? He was stuck in the survival mode because of some traumatic things that had happened, even dealing with that. And I just wanted him to see, just, 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 just understand. And he, I knew this, that he had to make the decision. This young one, he, he saw it early. He said, I don't want nothing to do with that. Israel, Israel would play basketball. The football coach is running behind us after the game. Israel's now dad. I'm just recreation. I, ain't, mm, I see what my brother did when I ain't doing that. He got that from me because if I see you catching hell, I'm not going to do that same thing and catch hell too. I'm just not, I pass on it. But this one here, his name means loyalty and commitment. And what happened, the enemy got him off balance in his gifts. That's why he was named Caleb because he's very committed and loyal to whomever he commit to and whomever he give loyalty to. So when I, I, he called me and I said, listen, let me go and tell you this. Shalom, y'all. Appreciate everybody. I know I made you mad, but hope you got mad enough to get some sense. Bless you. All right, now, um, 